Hi, welcome to Art Related Noise, the podcast of the Enter Gallery in Brighton. Welcoming you back, uh, I've got Dan Hillier. How are you, Dan? How are you doing? Good, thank you. How's it going? We've got a uh, print release coming up at the gallery uh, pretty soon. It's, um, it's called uh, Revelator. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me something about the print release and, and how, how it all came about? Yeah, um, I got approached by um, Janet Henson from Penguin uh, Random House. Um, I don't know when it was, early in the year. don't know what's going on with time these days. Um, I don't know, sometime early in the year, I think it was, maybe February, January, March, some of that. I asked them if I could do a cover for a book that was being released by Daryl. Um, and actually, I, I wasn't... I was, I was at that time. I think I was doing the, um, I was doing my my box set at that time actually. So I had a lot going on, and a couple of other projects I was working on, just my own sort of pictures. Um, and so I actually said I didn't have time to do it um, um, without sort of looking at it. So I had a quick look, at quick squiz of what it was about and stuff. Um, but I didn't have time really. But then she sent me the manuscript over, and I just had a quick flick through the first few pages, and then got back in touch with her and said. Actually, I really want to do it. It's bloody really good. You know, it's the, the, it was just such a great read, the first few pages. Um, and um, and so I kind of went about making it. And as always, with any with any sort of, like, um, I don't know, commission to do work for a book or an album or anything like that, um, I'm up for sort of taking a little bit of a direction of what people are interested in. But um, she was really happy for me to just do what I wanted, basically. Um, so she gave me a few pointers of a couple of pictures that she liked the look of that she thought it could work in that style. Um, but really, it was just up to me to go off and have a bit more of a read of the book and just make something that would that would work for the story. Um, so what I actually did, because I was busy doing lots of different things, I actually um, copied and pasted the bit, the chapter by chapter, into my notes and got Siri to read it out to me while I was working, um, which is a bit of a weird way to read a book. It's not quite an audio book, um, but it kind of worked. It was good. And it was just, it, I just got so into it while I was working. I loved it. Um, and, you know, the, I, I mean, there's lots that I like about the book. It's funny and it's dark and it's weird as hell. And, um, you know, it's based in the, in the, I think it's the Appalachian Mountains and it involves sort of like bootleg, bootlegging booze and, the sort of like lineage of women who, who, um, uh, what's the word? I guess act as revelators for this sort of entity that lives in the mountain called Ghost Daddy. Um, so, like, well, I, I just got really into it when I was, I was making, I sort of started building a picture, kind of just working with, um, um, sort of like trees and shadow and you know, and a figure, and sort of just was, was just working around with stuff while while I was listening to it. Um, and it just, you know, like most of my work really just sort of made itself as I, as I went along um, and uh, allowed it to come together. And it's, it's, it's not a, like, like any sort of work that I've done for books or albums, or whatever, they're never literal illustrations or anything like that. They're always sort of made in response to the book um, or whatever it is. Uh, and this one was really easy. Just I just love the way Daryl writes and, and I love the sort of darkness of it and uh, there's this sort of hopefulness in it and um you know there's a lot of sort of like nature and there's sort of like this sort of dark underbelly of nature involved in the book and the sort of supernatural and, and whatnot um so it was pretty easy to put something together you know it's really it was really just a really enjoyable experience putting it together and um just making another picture as usual and had you heard about the author before had you read any of daryl it's daryl gregory isn't it the author had you read any yeah, that I hadn't actually, no, I hadn't heard of him. Um, and actually, because, because um, I hadn't sort of read the whole book through at that point, I actually just got in touch with him and said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing your cover. Do you want to have a quick meet up so you can talk to them about the book? And we had a really great chat. You know, we just, we talked for maybe like half an hour. I had a really good old chat about it. Um, he, he likes my work. So it was, it was, you know, and, you know, as he said, just, you know, whatever you do, just do what you want, really. Um, and so that was just, yeah, it's just really nice from start to finish and got a bit of a, a grasp of where he was coming from. You know, he gave me a bit of a rundown about the book and told me a, a few of the themes that were coming up, which I'd read about later. But at that point, as I was starting, didn't really know. Um, and um, yeah, that was it, really. It sounds like uh, the sort of book is, 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 was up your street, really. I think you mentioned, you know, the, the nature element. There seems to be a bit of like, a bit around old traditions, 
you know, there and and sort of histories and personal histories. And and, and were you probably more attracted to the book, perhaps because there were, you know, already in the literature, it seemed to be the sort of thing that you yourself put into your work. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's probably why Janet got in touch with me in the first place, really, because she knows of my work from Instagram or something, maybe. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so she got in touch basically saying that she liked my work and um, she thought it worked really well. And so, you know, when I started reading it and heard about the main themes in the book, I was, I was like, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's good, good stuff. And I don't, I'm not really, I don't take on many um, uh, like commissions or anything these days, really, just because I'm trying to, I've got so much of my own stuff I'm trying to work on in lots of different areas. Um, so it's nice when something comes along and it's just a, 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 an instant yes, really. It's a nice synergy, it sounds like. Yeah, that there was. Yeah, yeah. And it's a great chat to Daryl. He's, he's quality. You know, we had a good old chat and just really glad to be doing something to sort of coincide with his writing. It's great. And so choosing the image, you know, uh, you, you gave me a little bit of a hint about how, the process earlier when you said, that you, you know, you put the, the book into Siri and you're listening to it in the background. But... Um, I mean, did you start with a particular image in mind and how did it, how did the, the image itself that led to the cover and then led to the print, how did it evolve? Yeah, it made itself kind of pretty, pretty straightforwardly, actually. Um, I had a, I had a, a figure that I wanted to use, uh, a face that I wanted to use. And, um, you know, one of the things that I thought I wanted, I wanted to sort of build into the, into the, into the images. The first thing that kind of struck me was like, there's a lot of um, the scenes that particularly stuck in my mind where when she sort of goes underground and it's really dark and there's a sort of forested area. So there's like, my feeling was, my sort of memory of the book, or my feeling of the book is like a, um, like trees, moonlight, like darkness, um, sort of underground um, and, and sort of like, sort of this all weird, uh, more supernatural workings of nature, essentially, you know. Um, and um, so, like, so the way that it came together is is the way that probably all of my work does really. You know, quite often I start with one feature, like a, if it might be a face or some hands, or a nice bit of foliage that I found, um, and I build it from there. And one of the one of the features of the the revelators in the book, the line of women, is that they all have a, a, a big sort of birthmark, sort of like a a, a big sort of like red birthmark on their faces. And so I started kind of working with put in the some of the, the foliage in so that that would suggest that on on without again without it being illustrative really but I just wanted to have that as part of the um part of the picture I guess and possibly not definitely but I thought that, that would be quite a good thing to do and then so it just became this sort of uh, the more kind of foliage I put on there the more trees and branches and, and whatnot and uh, the more um the it, it sort of became about this sort of woman sort of peering out from behind these these sort of like dark uh, sort of leafy um, growths and you know there's sort of lots of rooty sort of business down the bottom as well which which felt right as well because there's yeah it's, it's a very sort of earthy book yeah um, and an earthy cover as well because she it, it seems that way you know that the, the forest is in some way engulfing her mm. yet she, yet she's yet she's <laughs> revealed within it and and. And uh, yeah, I, I did get a sense of of what you just described there. Um, the yeah, and, and there's something in the in the book which sort of comes later where you know there's like sort of a few other sort of things start happening, and that's uh, there are a few details on the cover as well which suggest that which you wouldn't think about until you got there, really, I guess. Um, uh, are there so, any details we should we should be looking out for in the in the? Sorry. What what sort of details are these? What should we be looking out for in the in the piece? Well, there's a little. There's a little. I mean, like she's sort of pulling open the the you know because be, and I'd, I'd like the title Revelator as well because you oh. know I think you know I, I guess a fair bit of my work is about various forms of revelation, um, personal revelation or or something like that. Um, so you know, like the it's like she's sort of opening something you know, and um, and there's a little sort of like a sort of pinpoint of light with sort of tendrils sort of coming outwards in, in the in the chest um which have a bit of a relevance later on as well uh, but again like I'm, I'm really i don't like getting too illustrative about this stuff but if it happens it happens and it's if it feels right then that's what happens you know? 
So just just to go back a, even even further a little bit, just so we could just talk about your you know how you create your work in the first place. You, you know you uh, you told me before about your interest in Victorian etchings mm. and uh, and illustrations and how you, how you use them and 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 form your your work through through collage and then there's a bit of illustration and then it just sort of merges for, from there. Can you can you give us a bit of an insight into that? that sort of general process about what it is that you do and how you generally create your work? Yeah, I mean, I've got, um, so over here, I mean, as we're doing it visually, I've got over here, these are, you know, I've got a bundle of, we've got boxes of, of old Victorian etchings and engravings, um, mostly wood engravings and steel engravings. So these, these are this, sort of like this, I've just got bundles of these, um, uh, oh. Images from old, I don't know, all over the place. It's, these are all these are actually all sources that are either been used or are to be used in the future. This little box, but you know, I've got a couple of thousand of these um, these sort of pages. A lot of them put illustrated London News and uh, Graphic Magazine, um, all from the eighteen hundreds. And uh, yeah, so like you know, the kind of way I go about it is usually I I, I kind of just sift through them periodically and. Um, as I'm working and, you know, it's all, it's all, there's not really a li linear aspect to it really. It just happens as I go along doing my things, you know, I'll, I'll be, I've been doing some um, paintings recently, sort of quietly on the side. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll be doing some sort of stuff and it'll get quite shadowy and, and, and uh, or, or sort of structural or whatever. And it'll make me think of one of the images that I've been considering using for a while. So I might go and dig it out and scan it in and then just start playing around with it and see what get what's you know what what happens when I sort of have it on the screen in front of me. Or it'll lead to a, a um like a, a, a an association with another picture that I've or, or a, a, it'll suggest something that I want to make. Um and essentially, you know, most a lot of the pictures get built off one starting point and i'll just sort of let the process lead the way really you know sometimes i've got a, a, a clear idea of what i want to make but usually it will be suggested by various like previous work that i've been doing you know quite often i'll be halfway through a picture and i'll see something that i want to make but that's not the picture that i'm making at the time so i kind of log it and carry on and and at that point i might start sort of digging something else that will work with that picture that's been brought to mind by another one that i'm making um, and then it just sort of tightens and tightens until it's done, really. And, um, you know, sometimes there's, there's a lot of sitting about involved as well. You know, so there's a lot of just sitting and looking at it and seeing what's happening with it. There's a lot of nice accidents that happen because, you know, I work in sort of layers on Photoshop. Um, and so, you know, quite often, um, like the, the one that comes most easily to mind is the Our, Our Lady of the Everything, which you know, I wasn't quite sure what I was doing with that. And then I just sort of deleted a load of layers and there are a bunch of wings that had just been left there from other scans. And I was like, oh, that's the picture, you know? Um, so that, that sort of thing happens quite often. And, you know, that's definitely a, it's one of the parts of the process that I really like as well. But it, it, it all just does itself really, you know, it does itself and, um, uh, and I just enjoy myself being part of it. How do you come about then? I mean, the pictures, the images that you showed me, they're, they're quite decent size. I mean, it's not like, yeah, I mean, so you, you get going to, to specialist places and are they easy to find these these things now or are they getting rarer and rarer? I think they probably is getting a bit rare. I mean, I've, I had a, a few people that used to buy them off in flea markets and that, but that's kind of kaput now with COVID. Mm. Um, so that's just come, kind of come to a halt really. You know, there's a few places online that I can get them from. Um, I've been really getting into buying sort of entire books of um, like, you know, the, the, the week, a week of 12 days, the box set that I did earlier in the year was made entirely from the books I have of Gustav Doré and his, his, his um, uh, sort of output is really rich sort of seam of, of things to mine, place to mine, you know, and um, there's, uh, although it's also limited as well, it's great for textures and, and a few figures, but it, um, you know, I, I kind of need a range of stuff to make my my work work, really. Uh, so, yeah, all over the place. But it used to be that a lot of the stuff I'd get from, there's one woman in particular that I used to go and, go and see most weeks and see what she had in from her various trawlings around ephemera, sort of ephemera fairs around the country and stuff. So, um, 
yeah, uh, my, my sources have dried up a little bit, but I've got loads here to work with, so. And when we spoke before, I mean, you, you talked a, a lot about the impact of ayahuasca and sort of psychedelics in, in your work as well. What, uh, you know, how, how inspirational and how, 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 how much does that find its way into your work currently? And indeed, has it found its way into the work that you've recently done forever later? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's always there as a background thing, because that was a really, it was only like, it was probably like a year and a half, two years that I was really sort of getting deep into that as a, as a thing. It was an amazing time, but it's, it's, um, it's always probably going to have uh, an effect because a lot happened in those times, a lot of ceremonies, and I sat a lot of ceremonies and, um, and spent a lot of time in the jungle and, and being with, around shamans and, and just, just, I don't know, just around people that are doing the similar sort of stuff. So definitely has, continues to have an impact that rolls out, but um, yeah, it's hard to tell really, hard to answer the question because it just, you know, it's just, just previous experiences as they would have been just, be, just, just being out in nature, you know, going for walks, being doing meditation retreats and reading and listening to music, all those things, you know, they all sort of build up to, to influence. So yeah, I could definitely say that's still rolling through. You know, I think one of the things that happened with that time um, sort of going out to the jungle a lot was uh, really enjoying that um, sort of interface of people and nature. And, you know, I, I mean, it had already started years before that, five or six years before that particularly started coming through. But, um, yeah, I, I guess uh, it, it, it's always going to have an effect because it was it was like a real marking point in my life, really. You know? um, especially as it you know led to the ceremony show in Saatchi Gallery, which was great and sort of really spurred me on to making a lot of work. For, I made I think I made sixteen new pictures for that. I think um, yeah, that was that was a that was a big show you had. Uh, yeah, was it a couple of years ago now? Only only a few years. Five years ago, actually. Five years. Five years ago. Gosh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose it's amazing, isn't it, how, you know, these sort of key moments in our life, these key inspirations can then just stay with us. Yeah, totally, man. I mean, you know, that was sort of life-changing stuff, really. But, you know, so have some of the meditation retreats I've been on as well. You know, I've come out of there, like, I might have just, like, I've, like, I've had a dose, of, a huge dose of mushrooms that sort of rolls out for the next three months, you know, sometimes it's, you know, to put it into the psychedelic terms, obviously it's not all about the psychedelics at all, but you know those yeah it, it, it was a really big it was a really big deal for me you know it made a made a had a massive impact on my worldview and um and um yeah i guess uh also sort of added added some good evidence to um um yeah the stuff i was already interested in yeah i mean it sounds like i mean you know I mean, you mentioned earlier when you were, were creating your work and uh, how you had to sit back and just spend time in silence. Um, just, you know, just looking at it is, you know, emerging, maybe taking some time out, com coming back. Mm. Um, I suppose a lot, to, a, lot, a lot happens in that time, doesn't it? When you're evaluating the work, when you're making decisions, perhaps unconsciously about where that, that work is going. So silence, being in nature, just being outdoors and enjoying life is seems like an imperative part of your process. Yeah, it definitely is for me, you know, and, 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 and lots of other things besides as well. But yeah, that's, that's definitely, um, you know, I've just come back from three weeks in Devon of spending time swimming in rivers and, mm. and, and strolling along coastal paths and swimming in the sea and, um, and, and, Yes, but that's sort of my preferred sort of state, really, these days. And it, it does have, has a huge impact on things. But I couldn't say something leads, that leads to that. It's more, um, it just it, it sort of deepens my interest in making work that reflects that, I guess. You know, and, and, you know, and a lot of people, you know, a lot of artists will go and, you know, their thing is to go out and be in the city or, or to, you know, be sort of busy with music. Um, non-stop or whatever it is you know um, but for me yeah definitely um, sort of taking time out of being quiet is, is a big part of what I'm doing you know I think as I get as I get all on with this stuff sort of more and more like the stuff being sort of making the artwork and and, and everything uh, sort of merges into the same thing really you know going off and doing retreats or going for a walk or going out sort of like a few days sort of wild camping or um, you know uh, like 
making some artwork, doing a bit of meditation, whatever it is, it's all part of the same process, really. Because the artwork is a way for me to have a, a good old ponder on things as well, you know. And quite often when I'm making the work, I'll be listening to, uh, um, you know, talks and interviews of people that are talking about the stuff I like as well. Well, the new print is called uh, Revelator, and it's uh, released with the Enter Gallery in Brighton. So, Dan Hillier, thank you very much for talking to us on Art Related Noise.